This is Maureen Kafkis, the Brain BS Coach, here to tell you a little bit about the episode today. But before I do that, I'm going to tell you that I have a new podcast description, I have a new objective, and I have a new intro and a new outro. So I hope you enjoy it. I enjoyed making it for you, and I'm very excited about where I'm going in 2023 with the podcast. And if you listen to the Brain BS update that I just completed last week, you will know the direction that we're going in. Okay, enough about that. Let's get to the episode today. In this episode, I speak with functional medicine doctor and certified life coach, Dr. Libby Wilson. We discuss the limitations of conventional medicine and that it's not possible to achieve our way to enoughness no matter how hard we try. She also shares tips on the importance of mindset, being intentional with your health care, and being proactive with the way you take care of yourself. Here you go, episode number 113 of the Brain BS Podcast, The Benefits of Functional Medicine with Dr. Libby Wilson. Do you want more out of your life but not exactly sure what that might be? Are you longing for something but can't quite put your finger on what it is? That is the universe speaking to you and it is time to listen up. I'm your host, Maureen Kafkis, the Brain BS Coach. I created the Brain BS Podcast to help people define what success means to them and show them how to get it. I help you to let go of fear and doubt and prepare your nervous system for success. I show you how to understand your own energy and to trust yourself to make all the decisions. If you are ready to go inward and stop looking outside yourself for all the answers, this is the podcast for you. Now let's get started. Hello and welcome back to the Brain BS Podcast. We have a guest here today, Dr. Libby Wilson. Libby, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience what you want them to know about you? Hi, Maureen. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I am a frequent listener and I love your podcast, so it's an honor to be here. Um, I am Dr. Libby Wilson. I was a family doctor for 15 years and I was really frustrated in that role because the system is set up to see a lot of patients really quickly and to diagnose problems and assign a pill to the solution. And I just left every day with the thought, I'm not really helping anyone. And that did not lead to good feelings. And this is all before I understood coaching and knew the model and all of this. So I was on a quest to find a different answer. And it really kind of started with um, not finding the answers I was looking for in conventional medicine for um, some problems my daughter was having, but also not finding the answers I was looking for. I felt like I was a person who was pretty healthy, but didn't feel super great and thought, my gosh, isn't there more that can be done for somebody like me? And the truth was in conventional medicine, there really wasn't that I was aware of. So I'm going to stop stop you there. Yeah. Perfect time. Yes. We were understanding a little bit of the problem and, and what inspired you. So Mm -hmm. it's a perfect segue into before you tell your story. Yeah. Because we all want to hear it. What is something that you, um, I always ask the people on the podcast this first, what is some kind of brain BS, something you thought was factual Mm -hmm. that you've come to realize is fictional through the power of coaching. And then we can go into your story. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So I have two and they kind of relate to each other. Um, And the, the one that I hear other people say too is, enoughness. You know, the, the, the thought I was telling myself that I believed was true was I can achieve my way to enoughness. And I tried really hard for a long, long time <laughs> to, to do that. And, um, you know, from starting at a young age to straight A's in school, you know, straight A's in college, honors grad, honors programs, med school, um, successful practice that didn't do it. So then I switched to athletics, you know, I started doing, um, running and then marathons and then Ironman triathlons. And, you know, I I pursued that whole route and that didn't do it. You know, (laughs) it it didn't matter. (laughs) It almost did, I think. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, and, and, you know, that thought then led to another thought that was really difficult to deal with was there must be something inherently wrong with me. Yeah. Because, because you still weren't satisfied. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. None of those things did it. You know, I, I, I just didn't feel like, like I, I kept thinking this next thing is going to be the thing that lets me know that I'm enough. And, you know, through the power of coaching, once I began to understand, I mean, it was a total aha moment for me when I heard that your beliefs are just thoughts that you think over and over again. Yeah, I remember hearing that too for the first time and being like, oh my God, my beliefs aren't factual. Right. And yeah. this was huge. And it started to just open the door for, oh my goodness, I can, I can change these beliefs. And, you know, I, I did a lot of work through scholars and through certification and, you know, journaling and, and self-coaching and working with coaches and all of that. And, you know, it's kind of funny how it all sort of comes together at different times in your life. But I, I was looking through pictures of, of my childhood and I found a picture of myself when I was a kindergartner standing on the front porch for my very first day of school, you know, and I have this, um, I actually have it right here. Cause I keep it on my desk all the time. So I can remind myself to look at it, but yeah. I'm, I'm here in a little short dress with Ernie on the front of it and my pigtails and my little book bag. And I realized at that moment in time, I had accomplished nothing. I mean, I hadn't even gotten my first S plus in kindergarten yet. You know, I mean, like I hadn't. <laughs> But I was still a hundred percent worthy and a hundred percent enough then. And nothing I have done since then has increased it. And nothing that I will have, have done since then has decreased it. It's been inherently a hundred percent from the beginning. And um, that's just something I remind myself regularly now. It's not about achieving your way to enoughness. You already are enough. And um, that's just been transformative for me. Yeah, I kind of had that same experience because I got my undergrad, mm -hmm. then I got my master's, and then I got my doctorate mm -hmm. in occupational therapy. And I was like, okay, and then I was going to start this elder care consulting business. And then I was still, and my husband would be like, oh my God, when are you going to stop going to school? <laughs> what are you doing? Right. Like, because as soon as I stopped, I was back to where I was before I even started it. Yeah. What do I, this just isn't enough. So I totally, that totally resonates with me. Yeah. And I really used to believe that you got confidence from doing things, mm -hmm. but that's not really true at all. Right. So, no. Yeah. So I think that's valuable for a lot of people um, to hear. We don't want everybody to go, you know, quit school or mm -hmm. decide not to get their degree, but just be mindful. You're going to be the same person. Yep. That you were when you started it, that you are at the end if you're not managing your mind. So, okay, yes. let's go into your story then. Yeah. About, go back to where you were kind of going yeah. towards and um, fill us in on what led to your changing your business and doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a very long journey, but I'll kind of try to shorten it up here a little bit is that, um, you know, I, I was in this family practice, I was not feeling fulfilled. And I thought, my gosh, there's got to be a different answer, but I didn't know what it was. And I went looking for it when I couldn't find the answer for my daughter and some stomach problems she was having. And then at the same time, I was starting to feel like, man, there should be more that I can be done. So I started looking for other answers and I found them in functional medicine and functional medicine was something I had never heard of as a med student and a resident, you know, when I was doing that path right out of undergrad um, school. But functional medicine is all about getting to the root cause of what's causing someone to, to not feel optimally. And um, as I found answers for my daughter and myself, I thought these answers are too good not to share with the rest of the world. And so I um, started to make a shift to change into a different business model. And that's where I found coaching to begin with, actually. I, I hired a mentor to learn functional medicine from, and I also hired a business coach to help me set up my business. And I remember distinctly one day I'm working with the business coach and she tells me, um, you know, well, how's your, she's showing me how to set the business up and I'm a taskmaster. I'm like, okay, tell me the next thing to do. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm just, I'm a go-getter. Right. And, um, we spent an entire session ask, she was asking me how my mindset was doing. And I said, I'm fine. Like, yep, that's good. No worries there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she didn't just take that answer. She said, well, you know, like what kind of thoughts are you having? And, and I had just never really slowed down to think about those things before, but, um, 
she went through that with me and introduced me to some of those concepts. And again, the next visit, same thing. And I was a little frustrated at the beginning because I thought, my goodness, um, this is delaying me from <laughs> the <laughs> path that I'm trying to so hurriedly get on, right? Yeah, action, and, action, action. Ex exactly, exactly. But what I now realize in retrospect was it was the biggest gift she ever gave me because not only did she teach me how to set up my dream practice, but um, she also taught me the power of mindset work. And so um, three years ago, I left my busy medical practice and I started my functional medicine practice. It's called Best Life Functional Medicine. And I work with two types of people. I help people um, find answers to problems that they aren't solving in conventional medicine. And I also um, help people get beyond the line of fine because the truth is our bodies are designed to feel amazing. And when they don't, there's always a reason. And when they're not being found, there's a lot more that can be looked at that the conventional doctors just aren't aware of. And I know that because I was a conventional doctor for a long, long time. Yeah. Oh my God. This is like such an awesome topic. I'm like getting excited for people to be hearing this and understanding that the same way we settle for other things in our life, we're doing that with our healthcare too. Even though the, the people who go to their appointments religiously do all the things, yes. there still is a better approach to all of it. That's just, that's just like the tip of the iceberg. You are absolutely right. You know, I, when I was around 40 years old, um, I thought something surely is not right. And I went in, I, I was just feeling tired and kind of irritable. I felt like my hormones might be sort of off. I just, I had like this really nice life, but yet I didn't feel, I didn't feel as good as I thought it should feel for everything that I had in my life. You know, I mean, I would have to push pretty hard with the energy. And, um, and so I went in to one of my colleagues who was my family doctor too. And, um, I had a physical and I got the news the next day that, the blood work was all perfect, you know, as was my blood pressure and the, the physical exam portion. And it's like, yep, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. We'll see you in a year. Everything's great. And I remember just thinking, I, you know, it's kind of this mixed emotion. You're kind of relieved that they're not finding anything that looks like cancer or anything life-threatening, but you're also sort of disappointed that really, because now that means there's nothing that we can fix. And what I learned as I started into my functional medicine training, the very first, um, thing I did as part of this mentorship program was you were your own first patient. So you would run tests on yourself and then you would present yourself as the patient, but also the doctor, like, this is my lab. These are my labs and these are my symptoms. And this is what I think I'm going to do. And then the um, other doctor, the, the doctor running the program would kind of give his two cents and explain things to you. So I, I tested my adrenal glands and they were shot. I mean, they were really, really mad. And, um, it was a reason for my low energy and for my hormones and for all that I was feeling. And it was actually great news because there's something you can do about that, you know, and this is all after having a perfectly normal physical. And, and it came from all that pushing. I mean, it ties back to what I said at the beginning, the achieving your way to enoughness. It was completely not listening to my body, just push, 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 pushing all the time. Do more, do more, do more. Maybe the next thing you do will be the one thing that makes you feel like you're enough. And all of that was really underneath the surface, having a severely negative impact on my health. Yeah. So go on. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. I, um, I remember presenting this, this lab value and, um, you know, it, it showed that it was pretty abnormal and there's some different levels of, of abnormal. Mine was really abnormal and I started treating it. And, and I think the kind of the reverse of the placebo effect really happened for me because being conventionally trained, I didn't yet have a strong belief that this was going to make a big difference but I was pretty desperate because I didn't know any other answers. And so I, I took some supplements with some regularity based on what my lab had shown. And about a month later, I started to feel just more zest in my life, more aliveness, more energy, more um, just happiness. And it built upon that. Like it was just the starting point. It, it continued to get better and better and better. And this was still when I was working as a family practitioner, but as I was seeing these results in myself, I became even more passionate about, oh my goodness, I need to 
find a different way to to do this practice because I have answers for people that I and that I know are looking for them because I knew I wasn't alone. I mean, I saw patients in my private practice as a family practitioner every single day with these exact same symptoms that I have. And like my doctor who had told me everything is fine, I was telling people all the time that everything was fine too. But the truth was from the tools that I had in that toolbox as a family practitioner, they were fine. But now I'd added some more tools and I was realizing, oh my goodness, if we just look a little bit deeper and look at some other things, um, we can find some answers for these people. So yeah. well, I, let me just stop you there for a second, yeah. because I think this is an important thing to point out is that we go to doctors, they tell us everything's fine, mm -hmm. but we know we're not fine. You're right? absolutely right. Yes. So when we listen, this is why I think it's so important for people to get educated and really learn how to manage their minds yeah. because we believe that they know better than us, but right. there's no greater intelligence about our body than our body. And when yes. it's telling us something, that means something's going on and it's not necessarily just the way you're thinking. Right. Right. right? So that mind body connection yes. is huge. And they kind of go like, um, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. The the two are linked. They're they're definitely linked and you're you're absolutely right. Your body is designed to feel amazing and when it doesn't there's always a reason and if it hasn't been found it hasn't been looked for far enough. And so that intuitiveness that you have in your side yourself saying something isn't quite right is always right. And and I tell my patients when I work with them one on one I say listen, I'm the expert in the medicine, you know, so I understand medicine, both traditional and functional, and I'm the expert in ordering labs and interpreting labs, but you are the expert in you. And what we need to do is take that expertise and put our heads together to find the perfect solution, you know, yeah. and um, it, they're both equally important. I don't think one's more important than the other. I mean, it's, it's that, that personal. And sometimes one comes before the other, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we need the physical element to understand the mind connection. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. the mind is like, we're constantly anxious. Yeah. We're worried about something. So we know our, our, our mind is having like some kind of, um, well, probably having some kind of, yeah, my point is, cause I was just going to say something that wasn't actually, it was brain BS. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you caught yourself. But, huh? <laughs> yeah. But my point is that we, we become aware of things, all of us in different ways. So mm -hmm. the more we understand our body, and our own way of thinking and how we operate in the world, the more proactive we can be about doing something about it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. And they do work together. Like I, I fixed my adrenals sort of physically, you know, I, I was able to do that. And that really made a big difference for me. But the truth was, it kind of kept coming back because I hadn't fixed the root part of the problem, which was my thinking, you know, and just the way I was operating on a regular basis, you know, I had to kind of get out of this hamster wheel achievement mentality, which was keeping me pushing, pushing, pushing so hard. And I had to learn how to like tap in and listen to my own body and honor what the body was telling me instead of just always pushing through for the, you know, whatever the marathon training plan said, or whatever the to-do list said, despite of what my body were, was telling me. Yeah, and that's big for doctors, especially oh. I was my foot doctor. Oh my God. I couldn't believe how many people she saw in a day. And then she went to carpooling the kids <laughs> after work and there's yes. no way she wasn't going to do it because then she couldn't spend time with her kids. Then she had the evening ahead of her. And I yes. was just like, oh my gosh, how do these doctors maintain yes. this person? It's not just doctors, of course, but I'm speaking to you as a doctor. So that's why yes. I'm putting it out. That productivity, yes. it's not always even achievement or, or aiming for something higher. It's like mm -hmm. literally survival of yes. trying to get through everything that's on your list every day. Another thought that I had forever that I'm still trying to break up with is, if I slow down, it will all pile up because that used to be rather true. You know, I mean, there was so much that was coming in to my plate every single day with such a high volume of patients that um, I had to, you know, really move at a rapid pace to prevent it from, from piling up. And now it's not that way anymore at all. But even three years later, I still struggle with 
you know, having to remind myself, no, that used to be the way it is. Now it's not that way. You can slow down. You can take a break. You don't have to rush um, because it's, it's, it's hard to break up with these, these thoughts, especially when we've thought them for a long, long time. Yeah. I love how you say breaking up with them, but because yeah. we do have a relationship yeah. with our mind. Yes. Right. So I guess it's just like, if you were in a relationship with someone who wasn't good for you, you need to figure out how to manage that person or break mm -hmm. up with them or get mm -hmm. rid of them or something because they're not serving you. Yes. But those thoughts keep coming back no matter what we do. And it's yeah. okay because I get it too. It's yeah. like that I started to get urgency about developing the course that I want to create yeah. the other day. And I was like, nope, no need to be urgent. I got everything lined up. I have a schedule of how I'm doing it. Yes. I'm perfect exactly where I am. There's no hurry, but you do, whenever you feel like you really have to be in a major hurry, it's usually brain BS. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I had this other um, aha moment fairly recently is I have this nice routine in the morning where I get up and I, I, I journal and I, I do a thought download and I run through models and I, I, I'm such a morning person. I sets my day up for just amazingness and I feel great, but thought work is sort of like breath work, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a breath work expert, but if I'm sitting here right now thinking about my breathing, I can really notice it. But as I go about my day, I'm forgetting about my breathing. I'm not continuing to think about it. It's sort of the same for me and my thought work as I, I spend this time in the morning thinking all these amazing thoughts. And then as the day goes on, I'm like, okay, thought work's done. Check on to my busy, productive day. And it's like, I'm no longer thinking about it. And those bad thoughts that have not served me are just working their way back in, in. And I, I realized this recently. I thought, man, I'm going to have to take breaks throughout my day and just remind myself of this new way that I'm doing it and, and practicing it and practicing it and practicing it because I've unintentionally practiced it for so long. It's going to take a lot longer to get these new thoughts to stick and keep those old ones from dominating. Right. And sometimes it's really helpful to have like, um, like something tangible. Mm -hmm. to remind you. So you could put like a stone in your pocket or have something or a picture, like the picture of the little girl on your desk yeah. or, yeah. you know, something, cause it really is where we focus our attention. Yeah. And yeah. when we get busy, we just, go in automatic mode and we're not doing anything with intention anymore. And that's always going to happen to all of us. You yes. know, so you just want it to happen less and less frequently. Right. The more conscious you become of what you're what you're creating with your once you learn this stuff, yeah. like there's no going back. You can't no. decide. And it's it's accountability. Yeah. Right? Like there you you can't not have accountability when you learn and then there's people who are so resistant to this idea too mm -hmm. they're so resistant to being responsible for their own lives because they don't they don't want to accept that they've been doing a lot of things to themselves and creating yeah. a lot of suffering in their lives so I would imagine you get quite a few patients like that yeah, it, it can be a challenge um, to tie the two together because I do um, try to incorporate the coaching aspect into my patient care model. And some people are early or easier at adopting that than others. You know, I, I look back to myself and when my business coach was trying to introduce it to me, you know, I was pretty resistant to those ideas at the beginning and, and some don't embrace it and that's okay. I still um, love them where they're at and work with them the best that I can, but others really, really do. And um, so, so we let everybody proceed at their own pace. Yeah. And um, that's interesting too, because what we resist is really what we most need to focus on and pay attention to mm -hmm. if there's a resistance there is because we're like trying to avoid it yeah because there's some sort of but typically those are the things that we most like for me it was technology mm -hmm. I was terrified of technology I did everything I could to go to school for my doctorate at UIC because mm -hmm. it was downtown I had to get past my fear of driving to the city but yeah. that wasn't as bad as technology and then I ended up going into an online program. Um, I went from trying to find something I wanted to do to deciding to get a doctorate. Like I resisted all these big ideas mm -hmm. and all these amazing things that I had 
you know, available to me because I wanted to stay small and keep it easy in the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because I'm middle age. Mm -hmm. We were not taught to be major go-getters when we're middle age. It's as if our lives are here for the young people and we're supposed to still be creating and doing exciting things. So says who? Where I started. Says who? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> because, I know. You know, um, I, I was thinking this when I, I'm 48 now, when I turned 40, when I, I was 39, about to turn 40, I was listening to a podcast as I was running on my treadmill. This was back in my marathon days. And um, it, the interview was a an older woman who was running races and she was sharing some of the wisdom that she's learned from her years. And it was a big aha for me. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it, it's the older we become, the more wisdom we acquire. And, you know, one of the things I like to think about is it takes 40 years to get 40 years of experience, right? You know, so it takes 60 years to get 60 years of experience and on and on and on. And, you know, for people like us that are growing and learning always, the age is a uh, is a blessing, because the older you are, the more years of wisdom you've accumulated. Well, okay. so you're more I'm valuable. Calling, I'm calling brain B. I'm calling brain BS on that one. Okay. The reason why I am is because I know plenty of older people that are not wiser. Mm-hmm. Well, so they it might- has to be that you're open. Yes. Right. You have yes. to be open to all of it. Yes. And willing to receive it. And yes. to do this work to become wiser, you might acquire more knowledge mm-hmm. about certain things over the years, but I've seen a lot of older people that have not, like, I would not call them yes. wise, but I get what you're saying, but I'm just putting right. that in there to. I agree. I agree. I, I think there's people, you know, there's people that are on this path of personal growth and learning. And those people are definitely gaining wisdom as they go, For you know, sure. and, then, and then there's other people who are just, you know, I mean, you see, you know, the people that retire and they just sit on their couch and watch TV and, you know, they age rather rapidly and it, you know, it's, it's sort of downhill in some ways, but it doesn't have to be. I think it can be actually a very positive thing that your years, you know, the best years of your life can be as we get older and have acquired those extra years of, of wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for me, I mean, I'm 59. And when I think like, I hear people talk about going back, like if you could go back, like Mm -hmm. what age you would want to go to, Mm -hmm. like, quite honestly, this is the first time in my life that I'm completely at peace. Yes. So I I don't want to go back. There's nothing that, that, and it's the idea that we think we have to, Mm -hmm. it's like a fantasy, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, we need to get, we need to get people to look ahead yeah. to the future, right? That that's right. what all of us who are doing thought work and doing this personal work are here to inspire people to do it too, so that you can look ahead and not be stuck in the past by the limitations right. that you put on yourself. Right. I absolutely agree. And I agree too. I would not go back um, at all. You know, I, I wouldn't, I, I love where I'm at and I'm excited for where I'm headed in the future too. Yeah. So did you get to say everything about your story that you wanted to say about what led to where you are and then answer that question and maybe tell us a little bit about what it looks like to work with you? Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think that is the gist of my story is that I found some answers for me, for myself and for my daughter. And then I was really excited to share that with the rest of the world. And so I um, left the world of conventional medicine and I started my dream functional medicine practice where I help people really get beyond the, beyond the line of fine is my, is my area of expertise. And, you know, it's people with normal physicals and they're, they're okay, but they, they feel like there can be more in life. And so I work with a group of patients um, privately one-on-one every quarter. I enroll a new group of people and um, it takes about 10 months to walk through the journey that I walk through with them. Um, So we look at the core things that I find are typically um, problem areas for most people. So I look at adrenal health, I look at gut health, and then we look at mitochondrial health. And we do it sort of in that order because 
each one of those areas take a little time to heal. And um, so that keeps it not so overwhelming. And all along the way, we work on mindset and beliefs and all of these things too. And um, it's it's really a fun and beautiful experience. And so I work on people one-on-one -on -one in Ohio because that's where I'm licensed as a medical physician. And I'm also licensed in the state of Florida. But I've also created a couple of other things for people that don't live um, in Ohio or Florida. I created an online program, um, virtual course that people can take to learn how to fix their adrenal health, which is the key to balancing their um, adrenals and their hormones and their thyroid, actually. And um, that is available for anyone via my website. And then um, being the achiever that I am, <laughs> a few <laughs> months. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, that's not enough, right? Um, about, oh, I guess it was in June. So a few months ago, I launched my first book and um, it's nice. called the called the path of intention. And you were talking about intention earlier, um, path of intention, five, five habits to optimize your health and create a life you love. And the five habits are diet, exercise, sleep, mindset, and relationships. And um, I dive in in the book, and how to evaluate where you're at in each of those areas and how to, no matter where you're at, take a few steps forward, um, moving you more to where you want to be and getting off that autopilot default path of just doing the next thing, you know, being I love, love, love that you include relationships in there. Mm -hmm. Because relationships it's are everything. They're everything. They're just as important. I mean, I think people think when they think health, they think diet and exercise. Yeah. Those are the two important ones, right? Yeah. They are not more important than the other three. I mean, I, I, I hold sleep just as important. I hold relationships just, I mean, and, and I maybe would argue that relationships and mindset might be, are more important than some of the others. Um, they're, they're all equally important. And, you know, that is a little part of my story that I, I sort of skipped was, um, you know, I, I spent some years doing a lot of marathons. I think I did 15 marathons. I did two Ironman triathlons. And then I moved over into CrossFit was what I was um, really into after I finished doing my marathons and triathlons. And when I was still in family medicine, I um, went to the gym one morning before work. And um, there was a poster hanging up in the CrossFit gym. And it said the five factors of health. And it listed those same five factors, which is are the exact same fact, five factors that functional medicine talks about as well. And I, I just thought this is so true and so amazing, but yet this is not what I do with my patients when I go to work here, when I leave the office, you know, we're not set up. We aren't trained as conventional doctors to know a lot about these five factors and the system isn't set up with the time to teach people about these five factors anyways. And insurance no. doesn't cover like some of this stuff. So it's really, it did a lot of it's determined by freaking insurance companies. It absolutely right? is. And that you know, frustrated me so bad when I was an occupational therapist yeah. in a hospital setting. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I, when patients ask me, I get the question a lot when potential clients reach out, they're like, do you take insurance? And I said, nope. And I'll tell you what, the my happiest day of my life was breaking up with those insurance companies because the, the visit is spent on the visit with insurance is spent on doing what the insurance company needs you to do to document, to get the visit paid for. It has very little, it has nothing to do with what you as a patient care about, or mm -hmm. me as a provider thinks that you should be informed about. It's all geared towards, I need to document these key items into my note to get the insurance company to pay for this visit. And they don't really care about your overall health and optimal wellness and longevity. They care about keeping their costs low, you know, and um, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I just couldn't take it anymore because it just didn't feel, I mean, and I do think, I mean, conventional medicine still holds a, a role. I mean, if I was having chest pain and a blockage in my heart, I would certainly be seeking out conventional care for a stent or having that fixed yeah. or I break my leg or, you know, I mean, there's definitely a place for it. Um, but when it comes to optimizing your health and feeling amazing and um, really fixing problems at the root level. Um, functional medicine has so much to offer that many patients don't even know is an option. Yeah. And, and even aside from that, like say somebody doesn't want to pay you 
Mm -hmm. Well, they don't want to pay you to work one-on-one. -on -one. You have the, do you have a course just on adrenals or do you have a course around this other, like the yeah. program that you do? Right now I have it just on adrenals and adrenals is the first part of the program that I take people through. So um, in the future, I think I will create a gut program and a mitochondrial program as well. I also have a free Facebook group. It's called the best life challenge. And that's free for anyone who wants to join that group too, where we take one um, small lifestyle factor every month and, and um, walk people through that. So that's a really great place to start if someone's interested in, in um, entering into my world too, because that is for free and it's for everybody as well so well we'll make sure we put all those links in the show notes thank for your you. book too yeah uh, thank you book, thank yeah, you for everything we'll put that in the show notes so is there anything you've given us a lot of great information and I'm I really love this idea I'm the thing that keeps coming up though so I'm just gonna say it is yeah. I had a doctor I went to early menopause mm -hmm. at 39 so oh, it was wow. really early. Yeah. It was kind of sad because I was trying to get pregnant then, but <sighs> that's a different episode. But I had this doctor and he was a man and I went to, I went to see him. He was supposed to be like this, you know, expert mm -hmm. and he was denying everything that I said that I was going through. Mm. I, well, there's no research to support that. There's no evidence. So my brain fog the different things happening with my body. <clears throat> he was saying that there was no, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no research to support it. So he was pretty much just pushing it aside. And after going to see him multiple times, mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, why am I going to see a guy to talk to me about menopause and about my life now? Like, why am I just accepting that? Because he's supposed to be the expert because patriarchy right. or whatever says that. Right. So I decided not to go to him. And do you know that I actually sent him a card because I felt guilty and bad for switching <laughs> doctors on him? Like, how oh my God, goodness. What program can us women be <laughs> right. about looking out for ourselves? But I share it. Because I can sure as hell tell you that I am not that same person today. Yes. I would call him out on what he yes. was saying to me and like minimizing what I was going through, not supporting me emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, but like I bring it up because I'm sure that there's people listening to the podcast. And do you work with men too or just women? I work with men too. Yes, okay. I do. Right. I just want to make sure we let people know that. Yes. And, and you know, everyone's symptoms are real. And the thing is, when I was a conventional doctor, I had an answer for every symptom, right? So like, say you came in to see me as a family doctor, and you said, I have this rash on my arm, and my left knee has been bothering me, and I have this you know, heartburn problem, I would be like, okay, here's some steroid cream for your rash. Here's some exercises for your knee. And here's a blocker, acid blocker for your stomach. Now I think, oh my gosh, that's so interesting that your body is presenting with these symptoms, let's dig deep to the roots and see what we can figure out is happening and see what symptoms um, improve. And I, I have patients fill out every single time that we meet. So really on a monthly basis, this multi-symptom questionnaire, you know, and it, it allows them to just mark how severe these symptoms are for them currently over the last two weeks. And we track it. And what should be happening is it should be getting lower and lower and lower and lower as we work together. And if it isn't, that's a signal for us to say, oh, what's, what, what's not working here? Where do we need to look differently and do differently? But symptoms are real. And here's the thing, when he, you had better things to do in your life than to go make up symptoms to go to a doctor, right? Like, no, patients don't do that. Like, you know, they're real. And I don't care if the study says that these things don't happen. If they're happening for you, they're happening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It I, really does a number on you when your doctor tells yeah. you. Then, then it's like, then it turns to anger. Like yes. it pisses me off after yeah, yeah. I had enough, you know, insight to realize what, what is he talking about and why am I listening to him? Right. Absolutely. And one thing I, I just tell people again and again and again is like, if you're not finding the answers, keep looking because there are answers out there and um, your body's designed to feel amazing. And if it doesn't, there's a reason. And it, if, if, if one doctor doesn't find it, go to another doctor, keep looking until you find the answers because there are answers out there. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be this way. 
And right. And the same holds true for emotional and mental health issues. Yeah. You know, because it's such a challenge for people who have psychiatric diagnosis to be put on medications. I mean, those medications can be major, like have major side effects and really make people a lot worse yeah. if it's not the right medicine. Absolutely. So it requires a lot of diligence and persistence, vigilance. Mm -hmm. um, so you really, but there's nothing there's nothing more important than your physical, emotional, and mental health, because if you don't have it, you don't have anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's not really optional right? to not do it. So just say, accept that audience. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to take care of you better than you're going to take care of yourself. You have to make it happen. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, and it's so much easier, I think, to be proactive than it is to be reactive. And so, um, you know, I tell the patients that I work with, we do this work for two reasons. One is we want you to feel better. I want you to feel vibrant and alive and amazing and healthy, but I also want to be protecting you from future disease too. You know, I think of health as a spectrum, you know, it's kind of like over here is sickness and over here is optimal health on the other side, but in the middle is normal, you know, and the more we can move from normal to optimal, the better we feel. And it's kind of a hedge of protection against sickness. So by finding some of these underlying deficiencies, we're actually kind of giving ourselves an insurance policy because, you know, right now I'm vibrant and healthy and alive, but I want to be vibrant and healthy and alive when my grandbabies are born. You know, I mean, I, my kids are 16 and 13 right now. So this is far into the future, right? But yeah. I want to be able to get on the ground and play with them. And when they say, let's go hiking up this mountain, I want to say, yes, let's go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm taking some steps now intentionally um, to, you know, who knows? I could be hit by a car tomorrow, right? I mean, we never, we well, can't control right. everything. But you'll still, but, even if you get hit by a car, you'll feel better when you get hit by the car. Right. <laughs> you take care of yourself today. Right. Very good point. Okay. okay. So something's going on in the yard. Can you hear it? I can hear a little bit of something. Yeah. Yes. So audience, that's some kind of landscapers. I don't know if they're in my front yard and coming back here, which is going to get really loud or if they're just in the neighbor's yard behind me, but I want to give you the opportunity to share any final words of wisdom that you have about anything before we wrap up the podcast. Mm, gosh. So many things. Um, well, don't take too long because the landscapers might. Yes, be yes, <laughs> yeah. No, I I think it's um it's about being intentional. You know, um we have to be intentional with our thoughts, and this takes a lot of practice and takes work day in and day out. And I know that as a coach, but we also have to be intentional with our health too. And I do believe that we we as the patient are the ones that needs to take control of it all. And, you know, I want to be on an intentional path. Like my book title is, um, for myself when it comes to my health and for my thoughts and to just take it all into my own hands. And, um, there are, there are answers out there, but you need to be the advocate for yourself. Yeah. And this is a really important point. And when I was helping people age at home, it was one that I made all the time that you can't afford to hold grudges against your family members to not be open and to not work on your relationships. Because as we get older, we need other people to stay in the community. Yeah, That's what we want. So it's not just really like, do I want to give, you know, do I want to forgive Aunt Joni? Or do I want to, you know, let bygones be bygones with Uncle Harvey or whatever? It's like, it's literally part of your strategy is to stay connected to other people if mm -hmm. you want to age at home and if you want quality of life. Yes, absolutely. 100% agree. 100% yeah. agree. Well, thanks so much for coming on here. I knew I was going to thoroughly enjoy talking to you and I have. Well, I've enjoyed it so much as well. All right, audience. I know you learned something valuable here today. See you next episode. Thanks for being here and learning about Brain BS. I hope you enjoyed listening to the episode as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. If you did, please take a little time to do a quick review, give me five stars, and share it with everyone you know. If you're actually interested in being on the podcast yourself or have questions about it, you can find me in the Brain BS podcast community on Facebook. See you next time.